worship God. We give you thanks, our Father. Everlasting glory, everlasting riches, everlasting wisdom are attributes that you possess. We give you praise, glory, and honor, adoration, and thanksgiving. We thank you for grace that you are giving us in this season. We thank you for blessing. We thank you for supply of so much help and succor. Lord, we receive your help this morning. Lord, we ask for grace. Let it be a copious supply of the Spirit of Jesus, granting insight and access into the blessing and the riches of your word. Lord, we ask for the word to come forth with so much grace, power. Let the word have entrance. Let it bring light and understanding to the simple. Let hearts be established in grace. Let grace be further given for our walk in the spirit. Lord, I ask, Lord God, that these words also be witnessed with signs and wonders following rotting things in the lives of your people addressing things establishing things according to the will of our lord jesus christ we we'll give you thanks and praise in jesus name amen let's have a seat you're welcome this morning to bible study um last week i began a teaching series and let's see how it's gonna go um we began on the basics of our love walk Okay, and I began teaching, uh, I think we titled it Walking in His Steps or Following in His Steps. Um, so I began teaching on um, the, the rudiments of our love walk. And I said that um, for many believers that grow up um, in probably what I, we know as Christendom with very few teachings on love. Okay, um, probably very scarce and like I told you that um, um, it was it's not something that is so much common uh, we teach on faith which is very powerful and I, I send a New Testament faith walked by love can we say amen there's not actually any pure teaching of faith at any level of faith teaching that if it's not um, grounded with love it's not going to be a complete expose on faith Faith walked by love. Can we all say that? Come on, I'm not hearing you say that. Okay, so uh, faith is walking when love is there. I, I heard one of the fathers say this, um, Bishop Oedipo, and you know that many of them were aging sons. Like I've told you, most of our fathers today um, all receive from Kennedy again, of blessed memory. Um, Kennedy again. Um, is arguably, I don't think he's even arguably, he's, a, he's the f father of the modern faith movement. Uh, there are other people that are also fathers in that movement, but the Lord used him to begin teaching on the basics of faith. And Baba also taught on love. Okay? Um, and I've heard Bishop Edipo say something about the fact that people just talk about this faith exploits they don't know is love. You know, so meaning that they all know the crucial or the essence of love in the work of a believer. Can we say amen? amen. So uh, even though it's, it may not be emphasized within the general church much, but it's a major supply of understanding that should be part of your growth experience as a child of God. Can we say amen? amen? So last week we began to lay foundations on the basic teachings, uh, insight into love. I think I said that um, we need to do massive investment into love work. Can we say amen? amen? You will always need to work in love. What did I say? So your measurement of life in the spirit is measured by your love work. Not by your exploits, not by your results. Oh, this is a major stronghold with present Christianity. We measure success in ministry by results. Results is not what you are doing. Results is the quality of life you have raised. Uh, how many love people are you? You know, love is the measurement of God's life. What did I say? 
the true measurement of the God life is the how people are amassing love stature, uh, which is God's stature because God is love. And so you don't know exploits in ministry outside that. That's the true heavenly or heavenly lenses to measure ministry um, success. Okay? Ministry success is not how many branches you have opened. We thank God for that. It's not how the ministry is known. We thank God for that. It's how many lives are being conformed to Christ. These are standards that must be restored. Um, I think one of the reasons why there can be a general complaint that the level of quality of Christian life is reducing is because of what we are imputing. Uh, if you impute, if you impute little, you will get little output. So we have to we have to go and check what are we imputing. If what we are imputing um, is not sufficient enough, we can't get output. You can't get believers that are framed in the character of Christ if what they are hearing is not centered on that. Hello. If a Christian gets born again and the first thing he's thinking of is ministry, there's something wrong. If a Christian gets born again, what he's thinking of is how God will use him. There's something wrong. Now, those things are not bad, but those are not the fundamentals of the faith. Uh, you understand? God does not want to use you first. He wants to teach you himself first. Amen. I, I said you want God to use you and dump you. And he can do that. God can use anything if he wants to. You know, we even have songs around if you could do, you know, you know, all kind of songs. Just use me, just use me, Lord. God says, if, if you want me to use you, I will use you and I will dump you. So, I don't, so, so God is particular about your, your growth. You're changing into the image of the Son. That's very basic in Christianity, okay? Um, and I'm, I, I feel that um, if more pulpits are emphasizing this, we're going to get a better output in the body of Christ. Can we say amen? So let's begin from where I stopped last week um, so that I will not... Uh, I think this series may take some weeks. Um, okay, so last week I looked into um, some principles of walking in love. Number one, I said that the word of God is the foundation for walking in love. Can we remember? Okay, so let me say that again. God's word is the foundation of walking in love. So you can't walk in love without the word. Okay? Now, what does the word do? The word precipitates faith. We know that. Okay? So, how do I have faith? By what? Hearing the word. Okay? Romans chapter 10, verse 19, 17. Uh, is it 17? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So, uh, I need to have faith to walk in love. And I need to have faith in love. Now, many believers don't believe love works. So, they don't have faith in it. They believe other things. But they don't believe that love works. That like you can use love to overcome evil. They would rather want to kill those people. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. That person must die. You know what I'm talking about. But not love works. But not, you must have faith in love for love to work. What did I say? Come on. What did I say? By nature, love does not fail. Okay? That's one of the characteristics of love. Love does not fail. Okay? But you must have faith in the unfailing nature of God's love for you to experience the victory of love. Okay? Should I say that again? You must have what? Faith in the what? Unfailing nature of God's love at any level of your love stage. Because, you know, we grow in love. How many of you believe that? What did I say? By your revelation. So like I've taught you, your love abounds by knowledge. Okay? Give me uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 8. Love abounds by knowledge. So without knowledge, your love will not grow. Okay? Now, naturally, the state of your spirit when you got born again is that that spirit has the capacity to walk in faith and love. Am I right? But you need to be supplied with understanding of God's nature, okay, for you to begin to increase, okay, or flourish in love. Now, you can't flourish in love without faith. Can we say amen? amen. Because without faith, you can't please God. Hallelujah. 
Okay? They can't please God. When you begin to please God, it means you are becoming a love entity. So this I pray that your love may abound. So love abounds. Can we tell your neighbor, say love abounds. Come on, say like the, you want them to believe it. Say love abounds. Okay, so your love can abound. Okay, it can increase. Like people increase um, investments. Like money increases. Amen. Millionaire to billionaire. Faith increases. Not just only faith increases. Also love increases. So this I pray that you love me about yet more and more. How? In what? Knowledge and what? All judgment. So meaning that when I'm scarce in knowledge, I'll be scarce in abounding love. Amen. Amen. What did I say? So that means that we need to be giving consistent revelation knowledge concerning the nature of love so that we can begin to increase. So like I said last week, the first basic principle of love work is that the word of God is the foundation for your love work. So when you are scarce in understanding God's word at the very basic level, okay, the rudiments of the faith, you will not be able to have energy to walk in love. That's number one, okay? Um, number two is that you must have revelation into love scriptures. Love scriptures. Now, we have faith scriptures, we have love scriptures, uh, we have grace scriptures, we have righteousness scriptures. Okay? All of them are scriptures of truth anyway. But, like I told you last week, um, and it's not still bad, it's not an archaic method. I began my Christian work by doing topical Bible study. So I take every subject of the Bible and I try to look for scriptures around it and I study around it. And that helped me to at least have a basic knowledge about truths of scripture. So now we are teaching on love. So you must have revelation into love scriptures, okay? Um, and like I said, the difference between logos, which is the written word, and rema, which is the spoken word, okay, is revelation. So you can read a scripture in the Bible, Eh? and it is just a scripture in the Bible. Okay? But you can read a scripture in the Bible that moves from a scripture in the Bible. It becomes what? Your word. What is your word? That scripture takes a new form. It takes a revelation form. It now becomes a spoken word to you. So there's a conversion from written word to spoken word. The process of that conversion is what you call meditation. You wait on the word. When you wait on the word, God breathes over the word and the word becomes living. Now I'm talking at basic level. So it, it's not just scripture that I'm reading in the Bible. It becomes a scripture that is speaking to me. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not just about reading scriptures. We begin there. But you can read scriptures and nothing is coming out of your reading of scriptures. Okay? Um scriptures are to generate life in us and the movement of the word from written word to spoken word is we have to wait on the word we wait on the word we pray that's where we pray i was taught this one of the basics of uh, growing up that we pray the word to have revelation i don't know if you heard that before we pray scriptures okay so after we hear the word we go back and pray in the process of praying, many times it happens. You get revelation. That's where uh, most of the fathers start praying in tongues at least for one hour. It began with Kennedy again. And then many of our fathers took it up. And it's still a good, uh, we have taught this many times. I think Pastor Friday told us last year or last two years, uh, part of the benefits of praying in the spirit, regularly. Okay? Um, at different moments, even outside your typical prayer times. Uh, you can just spend time praying as you are praying. You are in a meditative mood. Some of the seasons while you are praying, light will dawn upon you. Can we say amen? It's like some of the things that you have heard, some of the scriptures you have read, the Lord can now begin to bring revelation into them. They become spoken word. They become life to you. Can we say amen? You, you can't find life. Now, give me that scripture in Proverbs chapter 4 when it says that God's word is medicine. Okay? There's a way you find life. That finding life is that the world takes a form. It begins to become living. Is it Proverbs 4? Yes. Take me to verse 
Thank you. My son, attend to my words. Thank you. Uh, so you can see that word. I ever say attend. attend. Come on, say it again. Attend. Attention. You know what it says? Attend. Attend to my words. Give attention to them, okay? Incline their ears to my sins. So these are attitudes of posture of receiving the word. Okay? So the word that you give, don't give attention to can give you life back. You don't understand? The word that you have not given what? Attention to can give you life back. You can't get life from it. Because you have not attended to it. Many of us have attended more to lies than the word. Okay, we have attended more to what people say, the opinion of life. Okay? What society says. And you know, at times, I am my child, at times I'm guilty of this at times, but I quickly adjust. You know, you can believe more at, at all levels. Can we say amen? amen. Now, if you, if you, if you, if you, um, if you look at news too much, you'll be discouraged about Nigeria. Yes. And you know, so, some of us have believed that Nigeria will work. We have prophesied it. We believe it. You know, as the Lord has spoken. But if you look at what is happening, you, your heart will fail concerning next year. Okay? I think I saw one of Daddy Gio's um, um, clips. When he was, he, was, he was lamenting concerning the nation, I was grieved also in my heart. So he's not even sure there will be an election. And of course, your mind can read a million and one things. That this band, these guys, I saw one clip. That's why it's no good. I won't even block myself from social media. Honestly, at times, some of those things affect your soul. They said bandits were bringing uh, weapons. I don't, did you see that clip where a helicopter was putting, bringing weapons to bandits and they said they are in Southwest. You know, you know the train attack? Was it two weeks ago? That was very devastating, very discouraging. A, a young doctor girl was about leaving the country. She just died there. And they have done nothing. You don't understand. Kaduna is where, is, that's where Nigeria's military strength is. You can't, you know, that, that's serious. You know, you know, we really have faith in this country. If it's a white man, they will have left. That's your, your, it's just like, um, you know, in, in America, Pentagon is their military strength. It's like you're attacking that area. You want to take over the country in here. So when I now saw that they are saying that they will come to, they are in Southwest already, I said, ah, these people, when would they stop all this thing? Something in my heart just was discouraged. Okay? But I just, I just had to encourage myself again. Can we say amen? So, you know, so if you pay attention to wrong news, eh, you can quench faith. You can quench faith. You will fear when you should have faith. It was Ken Komlan that said that love is trusting on, in faith. When somebody is loving, so love is a higher faith. Amen. What did I say love is? Faith. When you love God, you have not just believed him, you love him. Meaning you are relying absolutely on God. So, when you don't pay attention to the word, the word cannot give you life back. Okay? So my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Verse 21. Let them not what? Depart from thy eyes. These are things that you must follow. Look at that. Keep them where? Come on, keep them where? Not in your mind. In the midst of your heart. You know? I think that there was a time I taught you how to move information from the mind into the heart. It's a process of meditation and pray. Most believers don't wait on the word. If you look at um, Psalms a lot, you see Selah. Selah means pause and meditate. Okay, you can't cram scriptures and have life. It's not cramming. It's not an exam that you want to do in UI. You just cram and pour. That's not how you do it. You don't win the battles of life by cramming scriptures. Huh? You have to wait on the word and the word must be incubated into life. So let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of thy heart. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Therefore they are what? Life. You can see the process of conversion from, you know, scriptures to life. For they are life unto them that what? Find them. So you must find life. What did I say you must find? Find life. And hell to all their flesh. So and that's why at times you have to go back. When you find out that you are lacking in certain areas, go back into the world. Okay? You may need to get books on faith to refill yourself again. Yes. Eh? 
Hallelujah. Amen. When you feel that, you know, you are, you are having challenges concerning health, thank God for medical doctors. But medical, medical science is limited. You need to get revelation concerning divine healing and divine health. Knowing fully that God is your healer. All these things are there. And so, at times, you have to specifically go for those words. Uh, I think it was Bishop I used to say, if you have a problem in an area, go and look for script, uh, truths or books around that area. Stay on it. He has, he has a very big point. You know, you are not wiser than those men. You know, some of us think that, you know, because of light, you might think that uh, our realms are Oti Shago. Go Shaka. If not, Satan will come, will come after you. Those things are still very valid. What they are trying to teach you is that when you spend time in that area, looking into those things, faith will be generated or born in your heart or you'll find life. It's a technology of finding life. Can we say amen? amen. So we must have, you know, revelation into love scripture. So, see, okay, so you, you need to read um, um, scriptures around that. Of This kind of teaching is going to help you to see the importance of walking in love. Can we say amen? many believers out there. And I'm, I'm saying this. Don't see the importance of walking in love. They see the importance of walking in power. And they don't understand that love is the greatest power. It's the ultimate power of the church. What did I say love is? The power of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The last day church that will flow in tremendous authority is a church that has the what? incubated the nature of love to its fullest capacity. They are the ones that the authority of God will rest on. So when we are not investing in love, we are not investing into the future of the church. The church that is going into perfection and fullness is the church that will carry the full authority of God. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So number three, now, we are starting afresh now. Number three. I stopped at number two last week. Number three, obey God's word as touching walking in love. We are looking at principles of walking in love. Obeying God's word as touching walking in love. Or loving walk, love commandments. What we call, you know, we have love commandments at all levels of our growth. Okay, let's see 2 John 1 verse 5 and 1 John 4 verse 7. Now all the scriptures that teach on everlasting love, everlasting life, we all is the same thing we use to teach basics. Can we say amen? amen. You know, um, that's why you have to. It's the same. It's the same textbook all of us are using. Uh, God has wisdom. The Bible is the only textbook written to all students of God. So even though we have taught scripture at level of eternal life and everlasting life, does not mean we will not use that same scripture to go down to basics. You need the humility to accept it. Some of us, when we start getting stuff here, we can't go back down again. Sit down, we deal with you. Because in, you are still lacking here. So if you cannot zoom down the word back, at that basic level, it will just enter in and trap you there. It does that a lot. So don't be... Regina said this. I'm using now, this is now an instruction of the Spirit. He said there were some people that got to, to the peak of the Father's love. And when they were coming down, they had pride. Have you? Did you see? It says the armor was so much shining that they gave them mantle of humility and they rejected it. And there were certain spirits that caught up with them. So when you are growing up high, eh, you must be growing down. God is so high, but he's so low. God is so ordinary. The same God that is teaching eternal life is still getting people born again. Oh. Hallelujah. Do you know it's the same God? into more step down. It can go up, it can go down. That ability, you must have it. You say, okay, now I teach big stuff. I don't do small stuff again. It's not, it's not, it's not scriptural. Amen. Neither is it spiritual. Your father still does it. So who are you? The only reason is if another person can feel in, but does not mean you can't do it. Amen. I think I'm, I am slaughtering some cows. When you have when there is silence like this, some things are dying. <laughs> I believe that at any level of your growth, you should be able to still condescend. It doesn't. It, it's not. So pastor is teaching high stuff now. He can't do the basics anymore. I will keep doing it as the Lord permits me. Yeah. Except the Lord does not permit me, but that's what mean I can't do it. 
it's just permission. You say, okay, if, don't do it. There are other people that can do it. Does not mean I can't do it. Part of your training means that you can, you can, you can move through realms. Uh, so there's not like uh, now we are so high we can't heal the sick anymore. What, what kind of Christians is that one? Uh, now of course we know that we are healing, we are healing the soul. What about the body? Healing the body is not irrelevant. <laughs> it's still valid. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If if not, that your soul is going to have a problem. How will you even eat the soul if the body is gone? So we have to heal the body. And we have scriptures or technology to heal the body. So we must, we, that's why we have to close gaps. What did I say we have to do? We close all the gaps, okay? So Second John chapter 1 verse 5. And now I beseech thee, lady, as, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which you have had from the beginning, that we should what? Love one another. First John chapter 4, verse 7. First John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is for love is God. That's how they describe it. Love is God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So you see, love at any level describes God nature. It's the highest description of God's nature. Okay? God has faith, but scripture never says God is faith. God has power. But scripture never says God is power. God is anointed. The scripture never says God is anoint God is anointing. But he has anointing. But God does not have love. He is love. So love is the summation of all the mysteries of God. It is the summation of all the revelations of God. Any truth of God that does not end in love has not reached its fullness. Okay? Can we say amen? amen. Are we making sense? So obedience to God's commandment on love is key to growing up spiritually. You can't grow up spiritually when you're not walking in love or obeying love commandments, okay? It's a measurement of growth. As we attain a greater love stature, we are more triumphant over the schemes of the enemy. So meaning that love work makes you skillful. Amen. When you see someone that is skillful over the wiles of the enemy, they are people of love. You can't deal with Satan by just having faith alone. Spirits now at any level where you can believe God, confess the word, and then you are not walking in love. Uh, love affects spirits a lot. They don't like love nature because it reminds them of God. You know, I, I think it was okay. We we're talking one day, and there was Theophilus that raised it. You know, someone, you know, someone like Baba Deboe. There's something about him. Baba Deboe is a message, even if he does not talk. Have you ever thought of that? And at times you may think that Baba De Boy's frame is weak. Yeah. Meanwhile, that is that man is one of the men I know is representing God most in Christendom. You know, representing him. But meanwhile, when you see him, you think that this man is weak. Uh, and there's something about Baba De Boy that captures the nature of the Father. He's just he's so meek that you think that he doesn't have faith, or he doesn't have authority, or he's not bold. You know what I'm talking about? So there's a way God does warfare. If God was not weak, how do you think Satan would have thought he could take him out? Yes. So when you look at God, you can summarize God. I say, Baba Yale, take Baba Yale out. It would take someone like Baba Debbie to lead our CCG. In my opinion, you know, you can edit this. It's possible that the reaction of his son was based on some of the things he saw. That is what his father has been taking since. <laughs> he couldn't take it. He spoke out of out of pain. So someone like Daddy G will be bearing pain naturally. This is normal state. Now I heard that some of those things that there's an instruction that after a service people should not do this. You can't do that in some churches. The GO will raise costs. You know, when they put cost, if you do this, this is what happens to you. Everybody will just, everybody will adjust. But daddy will not cost. Daddy, everybody will not do anything like that. Daddy said,
Amen. Do we have that? Okay, Pastor CG. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My hand, my hand is upon my servant. Yes. My hand is upon my servant. My hand is upon him. My hand is upon Adeboye. My hand is upon him. My hand is upon him. For I have led him. I have led him. I have led him. I have led him into a season of brokenness. I have led him into a place of brokenness. I have led him into a place of brokenness. He is a man that has stunned. He is a man that has stunned. He is a man that has stunned for he wasn't like that before he wasn't like that before he wasn't like that before he yielded to me he yielded to me and he allowed me to break him 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 that is why he has more authority Amen. that is why he has more authority for Amen. he allowed me break him allow me also break you Amen. allow me break you allow me to break you allow me to break you allow me to shut you down allow me to shut you down allow me to make you weak allow me to make Amen. you weak allow me to make you weak and your voice your voice will be heard yes. even when you have not spoken yes. your voice will be yes. heard allow me say yes. the Lord. that's the gospel thank you pastor cg i heard that there was an incident that happened that um somebody one of the pastors in redeem took away one of the branches of redeem and changed the signboard and started his own ministry you know that uh, you know that, you know that happens a lot in Pentecostal circles. Uh, you know what some men of God do. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. So, Daddy Adebayo now said that I hand it over to my father. That's what he said. Or let my father judge. You just say, I just well, my daddy knows how to take care of that matter. That's what he said, and the person died. So when he heard, he now said, ah, I shouldn't have said my daddy should take care of the matter. Ah. Can you see that kind of that? Normally, you will have said, you use that as testimony on the pulpit yeah. to threaten any other person. Yeah. Say, so, you see what happened to that so-so-so person? He tried to take our church, he died. <laughs> Meaning if you try it, so you can see, God is so weak that you can write God. Yeah, I used to say it. If God enters this church, you can usher him to the back. He will sit there. You will know he's God. You can chance God. I say, oh, yeah, stand up. God will say, thank you. You will move. <laughs> so, somebody was now saying that at times we see, we see, we read brokenness as weakness. So like that, the geo is brokenness. We see it as weakness. If we even think, if you you we think it as lack of faith, authority. So there was a time the, the federal government, for instance, you can say I'm using a man to minister. Told him to to leave the seat. You of course you know there were a lot of issues, and that thing was a wrong move, of course, and he just left. He left. And look for another person to replace him. You know what? After I was when that thing was happening, I was angry. I said, What's all this? Even me, I said that. These people they're just rubbishing us. Oh, I miss somebody. I won't say I say I miss this pastor. I miss this man of God. If he was alive, they can't try this now. Sure, you understand? I was still saying that, saying that, and that the geo did that, and two days after, the person that moved that motion was sacked. They reversed all those things and that you came back. God said, that is how I war. That was when I learned my lesson. He said, that's how fathers war. Remember when Absalom wanted to take the throne, David left it. Huh? He left it. He said, that's how fathers war. I learned a good lesson then. Okay, so you understand what I'm talking about? That, that um, love war gives you skill over the walls of the enemy. So you are not skillful if you are not a man of love. You are not skillful in the spirit. Amen. Now we are still teaching the basics. Number four, we must practice walking in love daily. I call it daily love walk. Now we are teaching principles. 
it's good to teach principles um, from time to time. We must practice daily love work. <laughs> daily love work. I call it daily work. So every time you wake up and you pray, you understand? Proclaim in that day by the word, I'm walking in love today. I forgive people ahead. Those that will hurt me in the office, in the car, in the bus, I forgive them ahead. Because I'm a being of love. I walk in love. I walk in forgive. You're already confessing the word. What you are doing is that you are conditioning your heavens. Uh, before you go to office, if you are working in civil government, for in civil service, your Monday or your Sunday evening, prepare. And begin to, you know what I'm talking about? Begin to condition your office environment. If you are a doctor and you say, you know what I'm talking about? Begin to create the environment. Hallelujah, my week is blessed. My patients are blessed. All the people I come in contact with, they are blessed. I, I overcome frustrations this week. I walk in love. Because, you know, what I are doing, those things are not a cake. You are conditioning your heavens to submit to the leading of the Spirit. Concerning love. Can we say amen? So you have to be determined to practice love work daily. That is how you grow. It's a daily thing. Okay? So confessing the word, particularly love scriptures, creates the atmosphere to be open continually to the leading of the spirit and instructions concerning love. So if you are working in a civil service, for instance, amen, I don't want to say this badly about or your state civil service, but maybe it has changed. But well, you know, at times you get to the office by nine to do something. You see people see eating hot rice. The thing is steaming. <laughs> and when you want to talk, I say, Andrew, say, Angel Lowe. Now we are supposed to wait for you to finish your food. Now we know you are supposed to eat. But you know, you should not be eating while in working hours. And when you are eating in working hours and those that you are supposed to attend to comes, you are supposed to put your food aside and apologize to them. Oh, there are a lot of oh, ethical issues in Nigerian workplace. Something that you cannot do in somebody's private organization. They will sack you. I, have you gone to Access Bank? Everybody will greet you. you do you think they like greeting? <laughs> You're welcome to Access Bank. <laughs> Thank you for banking with us. <laughs> Don't do up. You have a quiet salary. <laughs> they will query you. Let one person complain. Sir, I, I, I dealt with one of your staff. I said, oh, we are sorry. We are sorry. They will give you query, sharp, sharp. I wish our government services were run that way. And you know, interesting, many Christians are there with scarf. Some people have tied their scarf. Religious spirit has tied their soul. Huh? Simple courtesy services. You see, you know, so condition your week, okay? Confess the word. Create an atmosphere over your heavens so that the Holy Ghost can lead you, okay, by instructions of love. We begin by learning to meditate on God's love thoughts, okay, um, daily. Then confessing the word also, which helps you to submit to the word contrary to how you feel. So you may not, I mean, if you know, at times you don't feel like going to work. You understand? But you have to go to work. And at times, when you don't feel like going to work, you will drag yourself with that mood to work. Then what happens? You react with that mood. Anyway, because, hey, don't disturb me. Don't disturb me. And then by doing that, you are just breaking love ethics. Eh? You are not kind. Love is kind. Lo love suffers long. Meaning that at times you need to suffer long with your client. You can't do it because your, your day is bad. Hmm? You are moody. And when you are moody, everything is moody. You know what I'm talking about? So we are people of the spirit. Can we all say that? Meaning we can be conditioned. We can recondition yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you do that, confess the word, you create an atmosphere over your heavens that can make you submit to the counsel of God's word. Okay? And then, um, that helps us to be able to respond adequately in love. Okay? See Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. You have to do that every time. Particularly some of us that go to work. Uh, and just make it part of um, a weekly thing. Okay? 
a daily thing rather. That helps you. You are conscious. Ken Copeland said it. Okay, and those are good books. Ken Yegin's book on love, the way to victory. Read it. Ken Copeland's book on walking in the realm of the miraculous. Okay, for some of the studies are from those manuals. I've read them. Ken Copeland says you have to be love conscious. I like that. He says be love conscious, meaning you are conscious every day that you are supposed to be what walking in love. You know that even affects the way you talk conversation, conduct, reply, the way you address people is, is governed by love. Can we say amen? amen? So finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are what? Just. Whatever things are what? Pure. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are what? Of good report. If there be any what? Virtue. If there be any what? praise. What do I do? Think on these things. Now don't think on your worries. Don't think on your problems. Don't think of negative circumstances. Allow these thoughts to frame your meditation. By doing that, you are submitting yourself to the leading of the spirit concerning love work. Now I'm talking about basic love work. You, then you can draw life and draw strength to be able to react. You know, the issue is that um, I think it's um, Newton's thought law is that to every what action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So what you give back is what you have. So if you are giving frustration, you re re reply based on what you have inside. If you have love, you reply in love. If you have conditioned to yourself well, okay, you can reply in love. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four to seven. Let's look at this. These are attributes of a spiritual man that is flourishing in charity. However, let us look at the astics, principles from here. Love suffers long and is what? Kind. Okay? Love does not envy. So when you, you see that you are there are envy thoughts around you, begin to confess the word and receive grace. You know, envy thoughts are don't allow the thoughts to settle and spread. Eh? As at the level of thought, trap it there. Amen. Maybe your brother is doing well, and all of a sudden, envy, envy, envy. You know, envy thoughts. You know, envy thoughts can govern your heart for a whole day, yes, and then they don't just want a whole day; they want your week. So at the end of the week, you become an envious soul. But at the thought level, just arrest it and confess the word. I love my brother. I walk in love, and then go and bless that brother. I pray for the person, if possible, have have gift and soul what you are doing is that you are breaking the power of that thought to rest on your soul okay so love suffers longer is not envy it does not parade itself it's not puffed up does not behave rudely you can see so love is not rude amen you know you can talk to your husband rudely you do it but it's rude and at times it may be stylish rudeness. But love is not rude. Okay? Does not seek his own. Look at that. It does not what? It's not provoked. In fact, I think it's, it's not easily provoked. Some transitions. It's not provoked. It does not think evil. So when you are thinking evil about something, you have to attack it. Amen. An evil thought. You shouldn't think evil about nobody, including the, your so called enemy. You are not supposed to think evil because love does not work ill towards his neighbor. Right from thought level. So you can now say that when you are like, when you are conscious of you are doing warfare every day. Because these are warfare we go to every day. At times it's possible you are forgiving somebody. Satan brings that thought back like you have not forgiven it. Address it. I will show you how. Address it. Father, I thank God for this brother. I have released this person from my heart. And so I take authority over this thought. In Jesus' name. I walk in love. And I love this brother. You know, something just loses his mind. Spirits are wicked at times. They can bring a thought back and land it on your soul. So, you, you can't be a free mind and walk in the spirit. Because you, they, you daily combat all kinds of energies from the realm of the spirit that are trying to pollute you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
So you can see, it's not easy to provoke. He thinketh no evil, you know. So um, you have to practice walking in love every day. It's a practice. Make it a practice. Okay? Like we pray, as you are praying, condition yourself and confess the word. Confession of the word, I think I'm going to have to teach it again. I, some, it's a culture I think is good and it's still relevant. Even in this season where we are declaring everlasting life. We need to be able to teach people the culture of speaking and believing. What did I say we need to teach you? The culture of speaking and believing. Very key. Okay? So, hallelujah. Amen. So, if you're going to practice daily love work, there are two things that we must note. Number one, you have to be committed to keeping God's word. Now, we are, that is still under number four. Number four is practicing daily love work. Now, so in practicing daily love work, there are two things you need to consider. Number one, keeping the word of God or keeping God's word. And then number two, walking in love to everyone. Keeping God's word, walking in love to everyone. We have to be conscious of keeping the word. We have to be very conscious. I know we know how to keep things, but we, we don't know how to keep the word. You know, some of us can keep things that nobody can find. You know, those kind of people. I don't think I'm really good at that in the natural anyway. But you know, some people, they can hide stuff. And they hide it that when they hide it, it will take a thief to know where it is. <laughs> okay. But we must learn to keep the word and hide the word in your heart. Okay. So we must be committed to keeping God's standard of love. God has a standard of love and you must keep that standard. You cannot go below that standard and think you are spiritual. No matter what you do. Okay? Because God does not measure you by your anointing but by your love work. Always get this. It's not by what you say. It's not by how you share. Oh, that brother shared powerfully. It's not by that. You are measured by how love has conquered your soul. Hallelujah. What did I say you are measured by? Our love as what conquered your soul. So it begins by setting that standard every day. Okay? And trusting grace to walk in it. Now, you cannot walk in love by your strength. You know that you cannot walk in love by your strength. So you need grace. But you must understand that you have to walk in love. And then you now receive grace on a daily basis. And that's why we also, I remind you again that you must have a daily fellowship with the Lord. In prayer, in meditation, and all that. Um, even in this time of corporate prayer in the morning, that's not an excuse not to pray personally. I want to say this because some of us, we don't even have a personal devotional life before. Before, before, and we are not consistent with spending time to pray, spending time with the word, spending time listening to messages, you know, creating an atmosphere of devotion. You don't have it before. Okay? Corporates should not replace it. All of them have their place. One should not chance the other. I, am I talking? Because I know some of you, the way you are thinking is that you just use this one we are doing, just replace everything. It has covered, covered for everything. It does, it's not, does it? Tell your neighbor, say it does not work. It doesn't work like that. Hmm? We are praying corporately because we need to generate spiritual strength for the season we are in. Okay? However, you also need personal strength. And that personal strength, you will get it also in your place of your personal devotion based on what you are receiving corporately. So the corporate supplies, but you also need to receive from the corporate by your own personal willingness to also spend time with the Lord, praying and, you know, and staying with the word. Amen. So each has their place. So when you set the standard that you need to walk in love every day, then you need to trust God for grace to walk in it. Can we say amen? Now you can have a difficult boss at work. But because you have set love standard, you have to receive grace that God. And you pray it and confess what and Lord, I will submit to my boss. Even though my boss may be this, but I am a child of God and I walk in love. So I love my boss and I submit to my boss. So it does not matter the kind of boss you have. There's this place that we, me and my wife, we go and do gym. So there's this boss there managing the it's an hotel. So we, we just use the gym facility. The guy is like, oh, you know, one terror. Those terror people, he's always complaining, moving. Yo, you, you, you know those kind of boss. Everybody say boss. So my wife has always been concerned about the guy said, um, well, you know, 
I said, maybe it's not that bad, yeah, sweet dad. Maybe it's not that bad. But, you know, I just saw that the guy is always, you know, boss. Then there was one day she wasn't around. I, and then I now saw people kneeling down to beg him. I was, you know, the guy is so, so, you know, imagine if you have that kind of boss. You know, but if you're a Christian, you must walk in love. You have to submit to him. You have to please him. You have to please him, oh. He says, I don't bloody care. I serve God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I serve God. Me, I don't serve man. No, but what does that your boss want? Receive grace and do it. Can we say amen? amen. That is love. I, I don't subscribe to believers gossiping in office. I don't believe anybody in this church should be doing that. But eventually, if you are doing it, my eye is on you. I'm seeing you. And I wonder, I will fish you out. You will be shocked. I'll just call your name. I'll tell you what you did in the office last week. When there's a, a conglomeration of gossip in your office, you should not be there. You should be the one dissolving it. Maybe, you know, you know people come together and will slander their boss. It's a normal thing in office place. It's all called office gist. Yeah, and it's gist. You know, he looks harmless. Eh? But love does not work ill against his neighbor, including words. You know, I began to learn this. One of the things I'm learning now is how not to speak ill. Not just publicly. God has helped me with public. Privately. That private one is a hard one. That when I honor you publicly, I honor you privately in my heart. That's the one that many of us, many of us are hypocritical. We say things publicly that we don't mean privately. Integrity is that you are consistent in all season. So, when you said that sign that you need to walk in love and you're a child of God, you walk in love, you don't do gossip, you don't do envy, you don't do evil taking, you don't walk, you don't plan in your office to bring somebody down. All those kind of stuff that they are not your part, you're a love person. Okay, after you know that, you set the standard, then you are trusting God for grace. Part of grace is that you receive understanding to be able to, you know, match that love standard. It means that you need to get the word more concerning love. Okay, receive revelation of truth that we are learning. All these things are things that, you know, are equipments to walk in the spirit. You know, walking in the spirit is walking in love. Can we say amen? What did I say walking in the spirit is? It's not being spooky. It is to walk in faith and love. So keeping God's sayings on love would many times alter our feelings and touch our ego. There's no way. You know, maybe you responded as a boss wrongly to your subordinate, even though they did wrong, but your reaction was wrong. You know, the Holy Ghost will correct you on your reaction. The Holy Ghost will not say that I, they, they did wrong. So let's permit the way you respond. The Holy Ghost said, you know, that was not how we are supposed to reply. Then you get to office the next day. Holy Ghost will say, go and say I'm sorry. You know, bosses don't say I'm sorry. Culturally, traditionally, the older people don't say they are sorry. Then you go and meet your junior and say, ah, you know, I replied to you. How I responded, you say, yesterday was really bad. I'm really sorry about it. Of course, you may see a young genius say, okay, we have been waiting for you to come and say sorry. You know, normally what you are expecting is that I say, oh God, no, 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 no. We are the ones that did what was wrong. He says, well, I'm still sorry all the way. Oh God, don't be apologizing to us. We are going to make adjustments. You know, that one is a good one, I mean. Yeah. But you must be ready for everyone. Yeah. Then you can apologize to yourself and say, hey, hey, yes, we have even been waiting that you will come and say, hello, sorry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh boy. God will help us. I'm believing God for those those are those are eyes of brokenness. Well, they must break us to that level where we can say that we are sorry. At the expense of our ego. Now that's your ego must die. You, you don't even need it in the first place. Those are the ways you, you, you deal with pride and ego. You know, Mommy Ellen came some weeks ago and I was telling her that 
I was saying some things about it. I said, ah, me, I can beg anybody. You know, I can beg anybody. It doesn't take me long to kneel down and beg. I'm not talking about beg when you are when you are wrong. I'm begging when you are right. Now, some of you don't know how to say sorry. You will learn it the hard way. I'm telling you, you don't know how to say sorry at all. So, you know, mommy, mommy, you know, I love mommy's teachings a lot because they are like Egan's teaching. You know the way Egan teaches. You know, he always uses a lot of examples. So she said about someone that she she had to beg kneeling down. Now, this is someone that is lower, a well, daughter, so to say. She had to kneel down. Normally, if your mother is kneeling down for you, you're not supposed to kneel down and meet her ah, on the ground together. Even before you hear what she has to say. So she knew that and the person said, oh yeah, yeah, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. I won't lie to you. I've even been waiting for you. She started lashing her. Now I'm talking about what she was 100% innocent of. She was just doing that to create peace. And she survives that. I said, no wonder. You see, certain stature does not come by mistake. It's not by much prayer. You know the way they teach us all these spiritual gurus in church, how to grow. Pray! Pray 20 hours! After you pray your 20 hours, can you do this one? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you beg some money when you are right? Yes, Just to create peace. In fact, part of what love work makes you do is that you lose your sense of rightness. You must lose that privilege. You, are, you must be of no reputation. Love trains you uh, to, to, to lose reputation or rights. You are able to release rights. Problem of marriage is rights. Any marital problem, most of the problem is rights problem. I have my rights, you have your rights. Both of us are rights. Eh? Are we here? Yes, sir. So, um, so anytime you are walking in love, it goes after your ego, uh, but uh, it goes after your feeling. But notwithstanding, you must receive grace to submit to the counsel of love. Can we say amen? Um, that is what crucifies the old man. Okay. So walking in love commandments may be foolish to the carnal man, but it is wisdom in the spirit. So, for instance, that begging looks foolish. It says, I don't take rubbish. Christianity does not make you take rubbish. Christianity does not mean you are foolish. You have your brain. Christianity <laughs> does not mean you lose your brain. You must know your right. And then at times, God says, Now it's not like if that thing is wrong, go. Generally, it's not this is not a, a right or wrong issue. It is a personal thing. So what may be right for someone is wrong for you. God says, no, eh, for you, that thing is wrong. Lay it down. Because they want to promote you in the spirit. So we must learn. That's the first principle. So in practicing the love of God every day, or daily love work, we must learn to keep God's standards of love. Okay, number two, we must love train ourselves to love everybody. What did I say? Everybody. Okay? That's in Hebrews 12. <laughs> or is it Hebrews 12 or Romans? It says, be at peace with all men. Being at peace with all men. Okay, follow peace with all men. Okay? You, uh, it, it's, a, it's a training of love that makes you follow peace with all men. Um, we must train ourselves to love everybody irrespective of their attitudes weaknesses and faults now there are some people that are unlovable difficult to love okay but love works best in difficulties love works best when you are loving a difficult person that's when you know that that's a true test of love when I'm loving you and loving you back you, you know you may not really know the power of that love. The power of love is when you are not loving and I'm loving you. 
That's why God's love is powerful. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? As a sign that he loves us. He went for us. Okay? When we are not ready to give him face, he, he, he was just looking for us. Just in sending his word to us. Sending Holy Ghost to, to convict us of our sin. So love is powerful when it's being resisted. When it's, being, when it's not given attention to. Love, because the very nature of love is powerful. Love is very forceful, even though it looks weak. But it's forceful, it's convicting. How many of you know that by love you can break people? Uh, somebody is attacking you and you are, you are not attacking back and you are loving the person and believing God for the person and that can actually reorder that person. Now I'm doing all kinds of things to this person, but look at what I'm getting. Okay, so that's the very nature of love. Okay, um, it love teaches you to master how to give God's expectation or God's standard, even in the midst of opposition. Okay, so we must learn to see the good in people and overlook their faults to walk in love progressively. You just excuse their faults. Okay, now I'm talking about it. You excuse them and believe God for them, and then you can walk in love. Um, I think um, in, in this book, Kennedy Against Love, The Only Way to Victory, or The Way to Victory, rather, he talked about a man that they were trying to look for something. The guy was so bad in court that there was really nothing good to comment about him. But he says that this person does not like saying negative things about people and just look for one good. They say, but he has a good set of teeth. He has a good set of teeth. You know, it's a killer chair in England. And then you're Bruce. Eh? <laughs> Somebody's wicked. You're talking about it. What do you want to use it to? You know, even, you know, some people, when well, you think about some figures in Nigerian politics, can you really look for something good? Like this government, you know what I'm talking about? And then you look for something good. That, uh, that, that's why, you know, you know, when you are working in love, you'll be very sincere. There are some things that this government did well, there may not be plenty. But they did some good things. And you, love will make you acknowledge it. Yeah. Uh, for instance, the former governor of this state, um, well, may he so rest in peace. When he was the governor of this state, he did some good things. Part of it is that the battle was clean. The roads were clean and were more organized. So, but that's a positive. He may have done some other terrible things. Yes. He may have done some other terrible things. But ability to be able to acknowledge that is how you can relate well. Now, you will not be able to receive him as your governor if you don't see from that lens. So, President Bohari is his star president. And there are good things about him. Even though we are believing that uh, they, will, they will repent. Hallelujah. So you can see that all I'm saying, you see, it is training. You train yourself to be like that. Okay? At times people can criticize somebody heavily at your working place. They say, well, but, well I, but there's still something good about the guy. He, he comes early to work. You know? So he comes early to work. So we can't say we love God if we have not shown love considerably to people around us, both believers and unbelievers. Okay? We can't say we are walking in love. You cannot reflect the nature of love or demonstrate the nature of love to people that are around us. Okay? So let's look at scriptures. First John chapter 3, verse 18. Um, this is Bible study. Um, first John 3, verse 18. Romans 13, verse 8 to 10. Then Romans 12, verse 9 to 10. 1 John 3, 18. My little children, let us not love in what? Word, neither in tongue, but in what? Deed and truth. So you can love in word. But when the practicality comes, you are not found. Eh? Many people get issues with believers at this. I love you, my brother. You know, we sing love. 
How is this song we used to sing? Together we hold us. You know, there's this song we say, Together. I need you. Uh -huh. You know, that, one, that song is very emotional. You are la la la. Eh? Hallelujah. You know, when you're singing that song, you can be crying. Oh, I love you. <laughs> but the test will come. Okay, so John says, little children, let not love in one line in tongue, but in deed and in what? Truth. Meaning love is in deed. Amen. It's good to be romantic too, with words. Baby, I just love you, you know. You got the sugar of my life, you got the bottom of my life. Oh. But when practicality comes, <laughs> make sure you back that word with action. <laughs> if not, you will suffer. You will suffer criticism. I shall let Elu Loti Eli. Elu Leli Eli. Love for Kaka. You just have mouth. You can you can only romantically describe something. So, is it verse nineteen that now says that if you have this world's goods, or verse sixteen, or verse nineteen? Let's go to the next verse. Where it says that if you have world, this world's goods, verse seventeen. Aha. Uh -huh. But whosoever had this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth upward his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? This is very powerful. It means that naturally the nature of love, particularly as it relates brethren, is that we are not supposed to close bowels of compassion. Now, even to a brother that is taking you for advantage, there's a way we can handle it. But don't let bowels of compassion close. Some people will take advantage of you. How many of you know we take advantage of God? All the time. God, just one more time. Just one more time. Lord, oh, if you can just do this for me. If you can just do this for me. If you can give me this job. Ah, I will support him in the glory conference. Before pastor come for money, I will so. Then the money comes and then all of a sudden you just remember that you need that your car is not fine anymore. How many times have we broken God's heart? Many times. We have taken God. We, we use God. In fact, we use Satan. <laughs> we don't use only God. We use Satan too. Satan will say, ah, oh, hey, you guys here, love me, Lord. You know, at times you always say, hey, surely, ah, Satan is the one using me. This devil, you see, you see hey, this is the work of Satan. Satan say, ah, this is a lie. <laughs> it's you that use me now. <laughs> say, Satan will report you to his demon. Say, this one a deputy Satan. No? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 13 verse 8. Praise God. So the very nature of love, love is always giving. All of us, we need to, you need to expire something that shuts down in you. You know, there's a point you give, 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 you break limitations. Now, when you give, you're not just giving money, you're giving life. When you need to restrain at times, you, God stretches you again. Oh, no man, nothing. Oh, no man, anything but to what? Love one another. For he that what? Loveth another had fulfilled the law. Verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, false witness, thou shalt not covet, if there be any other commandment. It is briefly what? Comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love walketh what? No ill. Eh? Love walketh no ill to what? To his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 12, 9 to 10, then 16 to 18. So what we are just showing you are principles. Eh? You know, we build on this with doctrine. We build on this with doctrine of Christ. You know, the, the doctrine of the Father. They are built up on these principles. So you need to get them at the basic stage. Let love be without what? Dissimulation. Above what is what? 
evil, cleave to what is what? Good. Be kindly what? Affectionate one to another with what? Brotherly love. These are love demonstrations. In honor, preferring what? One another. So anytime you are envious of someone, what, is, what are you breaking? A love code. You are not preferring that brother. Maybe somebody is leading worship more. You start complaining. You may not need grace now. But it means that yeah, you, nobody is saying in the kingdom of God they don't use the most graceful. I'm telling you. And that's why it's not good to envy anybody. I, I, I want to say this. Don't cast any minister down in the body that God has put his hand on. Even if you feel he's sharing low truth. What's your business? I know that those are sins that we can fall into easily. Maybe somebody is talking about an apostle Joshua Selman. I just water him down. You have a problem. Because you don't know. God's hand is on him. I'm saying it publicly. God's hand is on him. If you like, what time that it makes no difference. So you, know, you know, there are some things we do, we just think, uh, well, uh, what, what is he teaching? He has more, my pastor has more word than him. I did not send you. <laughs> if you come and hear my, my pastor has more word. God has different assignment for people. God can choose to elevate someone. Eh? And at times it's possible that you know you just wonder that. But it's favor now. Some people God will just blow them. And it can even happen in a in a church setting. A brother that you know God just gives him just give him unique supernatural favor. He's just favored, and then you are envious. So naturally, we should prefer each. We should prefer the other. I should prefer my wife. Naturally. I should prefer them. Even as a senior pastor, I should prefer other pastors. Now, I may have the privilege to lead them, but when they are serving their capacity, I should prefer them. Those are tests. Those are least one tests of love. In the home, you should prefer one another. Uh, you may be the man and you are the head and everything lands and begins and land with you. When you are like that, you are going to crash that home. Because you are not learning how to prefer your wife. Preferring your wife is that you listen to her and allow her to also talk to you. So in honor of preferring one another. Okay? Now take me to verse 16. Those are love ethics. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of what? Low estate. They can't say, they can't give us a commandment that they are not keeping. Yes, These are the very natures of God. Yes. That's why I said that God can come down to any level. Yes, and you must be able to do that. It's a sign that you are growing. When you are growing, you should be able to condescend. When you meet believers that don't have your level of light, condescend to their level. Don't shine your light and blind them. You know, you can, in a way, you blind them. I only want Darlene. My boy, but that's like, I know that. You just break. Have you heard of? You just. Then you make it the next thing. So you throw the light, they're, they're just worried, they're just scared. They're just worried, ah, which one is this? And they, they may not even, you know, some may not even be angry. You know, it's even good when they fight you back, so you'll be humble. But when they're not saying, they're just saying, wow, 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 wow. And as they're saying, wow, you're just giving them more. Wow. Meanwhile, you are that you are sharing. Somebody gave you. You are sharing the glory. So you must be able to condescend. When you get to a place that people don't know so much, eh, don't try to dim that. Dim your light down. Dim it down. Relate to them. Condescend. Fellowship at their level. If there is grace, then you can bring. And when you're going to bring, bring a little. Don't bring all the mystery and collapse it there. Just bring a little and then you move on. You go back home there in your parents' church. The youth church invited you to come and minister. <laughs> See? 
Yeah, praise. <laughs> All the team pastors be teaching in school of Christ. That day, you will download everything. <laughs> We must, we must be wise. I remember Brother Sam invited me to his local church. Where is he? Sam Ajala. He said, Pastor, come and minister there. You know, and you know, I'm also Anglican. You know, so I have strong Anglican background. So he said, I should say, okay, this word must enter there. I said, Amen. Amen. So when we got there and I saw the place, I, when I saw what I saw, I said, hey, the word I brought, I can't bring it here. So the first day I taught on faith, basic faith. The next day I taught on love and unity. I, I left JJ. So don't pull down any minister in the body. You say they are teaching low light. Did you send anybody? Did you put hand on anybody? Who, did you anoint anybody? Who, so who do you know? How do you know the sensation of that minister? Why is it that it is you that is judging, eh, criticizing and adding and correcting? Be wise. Some of them have assignments you know not of, not enough. And heaven still is permitting them. Grace is upon them. Jesus gave them that grace. Jesus anointed them. Okay? So, condescend to men of law, be not wise in your own conceit. You can see. Be not wise in your own so you can be wise in your conceits. They are talking to people with revelation. These are not people that don't have light. So you can be wise in you are conceited. Now look at verse 17. Recompense no man what? Evil for evil. Meaning you can do it. Provide things what? Honest in the sight of all men. When you are in business as a believer receiving doctrine, you must be honest. You must have integrity. Okay? When people pay 5,000 naira, eh, give them 5,000 naira work, even more. Don't, don't do 3,5. Quality of 3,5. Or one round, one five. That's not integrity. That's not, it doesn't matter the revelation you are sharing. You are failing. Because you are supposed to have integrity. In that integrity thing is very powerful. You need to read in a Copeland's book on integrity. You will repent. What integrity is. You will find out that many of us don't have integrity. If somebody paid for 5,000 job, give them 5,000 or something more. We should do that as believers. Not something less. And be sincere. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as it what lieth in you, live peaceably with what with all men. So those are those are those are commandments in the spirit. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus is our model for what love. Jesus is a standard for love work and. His whole mission was to save man, which was purely motivated by love. If I was sacrificial for our Lord Jesus to undertake the tax of saving man, he had to leave everything he was, he had in glory to condescend to us. And when he became flesh and was growing as a man, how many of you know that it was a risk? Yeah. Now, let me tell you this. Maybe I've not seen it from this way. God becoming flesh was a risk. The risk is that he, he could fall. <laughs> Satan could trap him. Now, if he was not... Now, it was God being tempted. You can't imagine. But he has lost his God, God estate. And he had become a man. He was now growing as a man. That's a high state of meekness. So that he is now, he is now susceptible to, his, to the adversary. Nobody wants to play into the uh, hands of his enemy. That's our Lord. It, that's the sacrifice they, they made. Okay? So, you know, uh, that was a pure love. That was a pure love. Love motivation. Okay? 
um, now I understand that love, you know, takes certain steps in the spirit that are ridiculous to a carnal man. Very ridiculous. You'll not be able to understand why someone should go that far in walking in love. But God did that to us. Can we say amen? Okay? So the greatest sign to the unbelieving world that Jesus came is our love walk, which is demonstrated in how we live in relation to one another. That's in John 17 verse 21. Let's look at that. <clears throat> so the greatest sign to the unbelieving world is not our signs and miracles. These are valid. The greatest sign to the unbelieving world is the ultimate sign of the church is love. Is the bond. The church coming into a perfect bond of love in the Godhead. So that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us. That the world may what? Believe that thou hast sent me. This is, the only, this is the only witness that the world will believe that our Lord was sent. And this is, you know, for some people they don't see this, they think it's weak. But this is the message. Amen. That the world will believe that, that I was sent. Verse 22. Look at that. And the glory which thou give me, I have given them that they may be one, even as I, we are one. Okay? Verse 23. I in them, thou in me, that they may be what? Made perfect. This made perfect is being perfected in love. So perfection is measured in love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did I say? So we cannot be one if you are not perfect in love. And we cannot be perfect in love without understanding that makes us perfect in love. Yes. So you can see that the essence of doctrine is to bring us here. Yes, sir. That's the end of doctrine. That we may be perfected in one. Yes. Perfected in God. Perfected in love. Because God is love. Yes, sir. Okay? And that the world may know. That the world may know. That thou hast sent me and hast loved them. As thou has loved me. So this is our greatest sign, okay? Um, love is the greatest expression of power from the church in the midst of the world. Okay? Love is the greatest expression of power. So when people talk power, most of the time I, I don't see them talk love. Because love does not look like power. But love is the greatest expression of power from the church in the midst of the world. I am convinced that, you know, that's why the last day move is about love. Do you know that? Do you know that everlasting life is, is a love message? <laughs> you know, you can see it as life, but it's also love. You can see it as righteousness, but it's actually love. Am I right, pastors? Everlasting life is about the Father's love. That's what I was teaching on, th on Thursday. It's love. It's a love message. So the last day move eh, that we bring Jesus back is a love move. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, nobody is saying amen. amen. It's a move of love. We have heard about move of power, move of word, move of the spirit. All of it should be accumulated in a move of love. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is love. So the church that is coming into Godhead is a church that is coming into full love understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So the church growing up into the fullness of love is the church that will come into the peak of unity in the Godhead. Now, the Godhead represents the peak of unity. Okay? And that is the peak of love life. There's a way the Father loves the Son and the Son loves the Spirit. And this bond cannot be broken. So growing up into perfection is attaining that state of life. And that is a state of love. Okay? So we can see that we are love is the perfection of our God understanding. Love is the perfection of our God understanding. Okay? 
Love is the strength also of unity. And love abounds by knowledge. Love is the perfection of our God understanding. Love is the perfection of our God understanding. Love is also the strength of unity. You can't be with some, united with someone if you don't love them. You see, people that are together without, if it's not love that binds them together, it will be tested. Amen. You need to love someone to stay with that person. If you love something else, apart from that person, and that thing is taken away, you will not be able to keep that love commitment. Because your motivation for love is strong. And that's the problem for many people in marriage. You know, I'm always ending in marriage. Uh, you know, because what motivated them was wrong. So when that thing is gone, they can't, they can't keep covenant anymore. They begin to struggle. You know, they begin to struggle. All of a sudden, that same person you love is now irritated. You are, the person is irritative. She's not even fine again. Meanwhile, it's true. She will not be fine forever. Meaning that you must quickly define what beauty is. Quickly, now, 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 now. While both of you see our fresh skin. Uh, because a time will come when fresher girls will tempt you. Because your wife at home is not fresh anymore. Because it was freshness that made you go for her. She may not be as fresh as she was. Though you can't keep covenant because that thing is removed. If your motivation is physical, physique. That is after three children, some things will may not be the same anymore. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm I'm trying to draw a point that you can be united with someone that you don't love. Okay, if it's you it's, it's, if it's on something that is not a core attribute of God, then most likely that that bonding will fail. Okay. So what makes you stick to something is a God attribute. It must be built on a substance that is enduring. Hallelujah. So to work consistently in love, even at the basic level, okay, we must have faith in the standards of love that God set. So all the love standards in scripture, you must have faith in them. Even now that you don't have full understanding, you believe them. Can we say amen? amen. Tell everyone, say, I believe. I believe. And therefore, I speak. I Come on, say it. I believe. I believe. And therefore, I speak. I I so, you are training yourself to believe scripture. If God says that love suffers long, love is kind, love thinketh no evil, love is not rude, then I believe it. Amen. By believing it, you know, some people will risk it. I, eh, I don't believe it. Now, one of the reasons why you don't believe it is that you see that issues in your life are contradicting that standard. And you are not ready to relinquish your standard. It's painful. So you believe somewhere that this thing is not true. Like when you love money so much, eh, more than truth, you can say that money is not the root of all evil. You will say it inside yourself. But meanwhile, that's what the scripture said. That's what scripture says. It says money is the, the love of money rather. The Bible says the love of money is the root of evil, not money. The love of money is the root of evil. But if you don't have believe that scripture, you won't believe it. You will still love money. More than love. You will still love it. You will still struggle with that truth. So any truth you don't believe in cannot manifest as life to you. If you don't believe love, for instance, believe in it, you will not be able to see it, you know, as a nature. So we must constantly, um, consistently believe those truths and you know, begin to confess them and walk in them. Confessing the standard of love concerning, confessing the standard of the word concerning love, okay, uh, stirs up faith in our heart so that we can receive sufficient grace to walk in it. Ephesians 3 verse 16 to 19. 
So it is as we make increase in love that we can deal with the obstacles that surround love work. One of the obstacles that surround love work is unforgiveness. One of the obstacles that surround love work is strife. Okay? But it is as you flourish in love that you can what? You can deal with them. To deal with them means that you have strength to what? Overcome them. They are like stumbling block. And then you can overcome them. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with what? Mind and the spirit in his inner man. Verse 17 is where we are going exactly. Um, that you may that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Ye be rooted and what? Grounded in love. So love is the root or the grounding. To be grounded is that you are what? Established. So Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. Christ will be rooted in your heart by love. So the entrance of Christ into your soul. This is a soul thing. It's not your spirit. They are talking to believers. Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. But Christ will not be rooted in your heart without what? Love. So meaning that he can dwell in your heart by faith and still live. Yes, sir. He meaning he's not gr you are not grounded. So love is the establishment of any experience. Now, now this charity for instance is the establishment of the experience of Christ. When Christ dwells in your heart, Christ wants to be rooted. And how he's rooted is that you must come into a revelation of love. It is love that roots him in your heart. Making it difficult to unplug him. Can we say amen? So it is when we are flourishing in love that we are able to deal with circumstances or stumbling blocks around our love work. Let's just begin this. I'll continue next week. So one of the basic foundation of growing in love or prospering in love is to come into an understanding that love that God's law that God loves us deeply and passionately. Now there's no way you can grow in love work when you don't believe that God loves you. It starts there. So, if I don't believe that God loves me, I can't walk in love. What did I say? Some of you are not talking. It is why, yes, you must, you must begin with this foundation. Some people are confused. Religion has battered their mind. They are not sure if God loves them. They are not, they are not sure. They are not confident in that love. So, it's a problem. Okay? So you will not, if you don't have that revelation, you'll not be able to journey for a long time because there are a lot of major dealings on, on the way. So you know, do you still believe that when you are going through tough times that God still loves you? Difficult times, trying times. But God loves you, notwithstanding. Those trying times are supposed to make you perfect in love. Can we say amen? amen. But you must believe it. That God loves me. God still God loves me so. Hallelujah. It's a foundation that you must have. Okay? That God passionately loves us. Um, even if we don't respond back, it doesn't change his mind concerning love. Okay? Even when we are faithless, we are disobedient, and we we are not even loving him. God still loves us. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. God still loves you. Now, that does not mean you are pleasing him. But he still loves you. You know, those are two different things. God loves you. does not mean you are pleasing God. Neither does it mean you are pleasing him. So I can love you even if you are not pleasing me. Because love is my nature. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you didn't get that. I can love Isaac. does not mean Isaac is pleasing me. Because he doesn't know my will. He's not doing my will. He's not doing my will the way I want it. But I still love him because he's my son. Okay? So you can see, God loves us because he is love. And he will always love. Amen. Amen. But that does not mean I am pleasing him. I please God when I do his will. What did I say? So when we are not pleasing God, does he hate us? God does not hate he loves still. Hallelujah. 
When God throws a soul into a lake, it's love that throws him into a lake. Love also judges. I mean that's a final judgment for such a soul. Anybody that ends up in a lake is love judgment. Meaning God has tried everything he could do to save that person. The person, you know some people will blatantly refuse God. Say, God, see, I know what I'm doing. I don't want you, sir. I don't want you. I've tested you and I think you are not good enough. Like a, that woman that Kennedy again talked about that was a minister for many years and turned back from God. At the last minute, she was still given an opportunity. Say, I don't want Jesus. So, when we are without what strength? In what? Due time. Christ died for who? The ungodly. Verse 7. We are, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, peradventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. Verse 8. But God commended what? His love towards us. In that while we were what? Nobody's talking to me. While we were what? Christ what? Died for us. Okay? Why we were yet sinners. Meaning, why we were not interested in God. God sought for us. Can we say amen? amen? That's the fundamentals of God's love. You must know that God loves you. Okay? God loves you. Now, this is it. When you know God loves you, and God loves you passionately, when you sin, where do you run back to? That's the problem, you see? For many, they don't see God. When they sin, they run. Now, somebody that commits suicide, for instance, what's the motivation for suicide? Is that I'm so bad, and the, my guilt will kill me. Rather than you saying that, if, I'm, if I've done this thing, the only person that can solve my problem is my father, is my God. So, naturally, people should be running to God because he's the only one that can help. Hallelujah. So, God loves us and he's committed to us. He's committed to us and that's the reason why God is giving you knowledge so that you can walk in his will. It is love that makes so you give somebody understanding. If I know that you need more knowledge to do my will, love is, it makes me share that thing. If I don't love you, I'll not share my secret with you. I'll not give you what can help you to prosper in my will. So everything about God is love. God gives us everything. You know, at New Birth, he gave us life. He, he brought gifts. Gifts of the Spirit. I mean, you know those things I love gifts. Understanding at every level. They are love understanding. Everything God, God does is what? is showering us with love. Can we say amen? amen? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. Amen. Ephesians 2 verse 4. So God is committed to us even when we are not committed to him. Now that does not mean it's, that does not pay you. Yeah. He says I don't care. God loves me. You know they say God loves me. God loves me. No matter how I am. God still loves me. Uh, yeah, God loves you, but he's not pleased with you. He doesn't want you to remain the way you are. Because his love that is showering you is for you to respond back. If you don't respond back to him, it is your loss. God is worthy to be giving your whole heart. So when God is loving you and you are not responding back, you are not, you are not, there's no pride in that. You know, there are some songs we sing that show that God loves me no matter what I do. And we even say with confidence, no matter what I do, God loves me. God loves you, yes, but, but you are not pleasing him. That does not pay you. Because you will find out that you will still regret that. Because you are going to fall lesser than what he willed for you. By not responding back in love. Can we say Amen. For God, who is rich in mercy, for what? His great love. Can we all say that? Say it again. Come on, say it again. Wherewith he what? Loved us. So this is a manifestation of God's nature. Okay? Great love. This is a product of mercy. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. God is always faithful to the side of his love by gain. Even when you are not committed. 
God is a covenant keeping God. He keeps his own side of the bargain. Then Psalm 103. If we believe not, yet he abided what? Faithful. He cannot what? Deny himself. God cannot deny that he is love. Even when we are not loving him back. He's not going to change that. You see all these people now, I've tried my best. I'm changing my mind. God does not change his mind concerning love. Amen. Amen. And like I told you, there is justice in love. God is going to reward righteousness and he's going to judge evil. And it is also love doing that. Love judges evil. What did I say? Love judges evil. What did I say? That is God's justice. So justice is a product of love. Justice, judgment, they are products of love. When you love, you judge. When you love, you reward. You reward good. You reward evil. So that's what people need to know. You know? The American world needs to know that God is also a good judge. And he's loving. You can't be doing all those gay stuff and you think he will keep blessing you. He will judge it. Love judges. You cannot break ordinances that he put in to keep man in certain boundaries and think that it will be fine. He will judge it. God is a judge. And it is love that judges. Finally, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Verse 1 to 5, then 6 to 17, 8 to 17. The, the psalmist describes some of the attributes of God's nature. Okay? Bless the Lord, O my soul. And what? All that is within me blesses. What? Holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Look at it. He was telling him, bless the Lord, my soul. Eh? Forget not all his benefits. Who does what? Forgives all thy what? Iniquities. Who what? Healeth all their diseases. So you can see healing is a product of love. That's why healing is a valid expression of the New Testament, starting from healing of the body. So healing of the body is also a beginning of healing. Healing originally is restoring man. So, but they also heal the body, put the body in shape so that they can finish the work inside you. So he let all thy diseases. Amen. Who redeemed thy life from what? Destruction. And crowned thy crowned thee with what? Loving kindness and what? Tender mercies. These are things that he does naturally. It's his nature. Who satisfy thy mouth with what? Good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 6. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment. So who does this? Love for all that are what? Oppressed. Verse 7. Verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger. This is his nature. He's merciful. He's also gracious. Slow to anger and plenteous in what? Mercy. God is very plentiful. That does not mean you should take advantage of that. How I many of you know that you have done many things that God left you? Many, many things that you have done. God just, you say you are sorry, you cry. God will just, okay, let's leave him. God is merciful. No? But there is judgment too. You know, at times, some of you have done things, have done things, have done things, have done things, and you have gotten away with it. And God, the God says that if we we'll allow this person to keep doing this thing, so God will just make sure they expose you. That exposure will damage you. That damage is love. He will not always what child, neither will he keep his what hunger forever. You can see, look at David describing God. He's describing the nature of God's love. Eh? Verse, verse, very beautiful scripture. He had not dealt with us after our sins. I'm telling you. Nor rewarded us according to what? Our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his what? Mercy towards them that what? Fear him. Hallelujah. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he would remove our transgressions from us. Like a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. He knoweth our frame. 
That's, uh, that, those are things that, those are nature of love. And that's why when you are amassing a love nature, you can forbear people. You know their frame. At times, you just conclude that, see, this person cannot do more than this. You, are, you now have to relate with that person at that level. God will help us. You know our frame, you remember that we are dust. Some people, they are flesh. You can't ex expect spirit from them. That will not be justice. The only thing you can do if you want to help that person is to condescend and supply something that will make that person improve their state. Expecting something more is just is not justice. As far as for man, his days are like what? Grass. As the flower of the field, so he fl flourished. The wind passed over it and it's gone. And the place thereof and the place thereof shall know it no more. I think I'm going to press. 17. But the what? Mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Upon them that what? Fear him. His righteousness unto his children's children. So meaning that love is a nature we can always bank on. This mercy is the ex expression of God's great love. Can we say amen? amen? So fundamental in closing, every believer should start with the consciousness and knowing deep down that God loves me. And we, we are not worth it before he began the project. So you must understand that God, is, God loves us. God is committed to us. When we fail, eh, our heart should turn back to our love. When we depart from him and he convicts us, we should run back to him. He's the only, way that can help, he's the only one that can help us. He's the only one that knows your frame. There is no sin that can intimidate God. No, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you have done. That you are running away from God. But I can tell you that what you did, God, God has seen it before you did it. Yes, running away from him is just running away from your help. Yes, you are running away from something that can heal you. Yes, so today I'm also inviting you and reminding you. And for some of you, remind you that you can have restoration with God. Amen. You can turn back to God. Amen. That situation that has limited you and taken you back away from God. God is calling you back. To allow him to handle that issue. Allow him to become the preeminence again of your heart. You know, I, I, I perceive, let's turn to our feet. I perceive that there are people here. Your whole sins are returning back. And they are tormenting you. And you are confused. And I perceive that you are even condemned. You are telling yourself that, why is it that I know so much? And I am, I am living less than it. I hear the Lord says that, hand it over to love. I hear the Lord says that, I care for you. I hear the Lord says that, you have to give it all to me. I hear the Lord says, you have to gaze upon me, for I am your healer. I am the one that can help you. I hear the Lord says, lift up your eyes and see me. See me take those issues away one by one. See me heal you back and restore you. See me, see me, see me. I hear the Lord says, see me. Put your gaze upon me. And I will heal you completely. See the Lord. Can we lift up our hands and receive grace? I see, I see the Lord doing a work of healing. For some of us, it's a work of restoration. The Lord is doing a work of restoration. Can we just receive grace? Can we just receive grace? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just receive grace. Let's just receive grace. Let's just receive grace. Let's just receive grace. No matter what you are falling stand short of, the Lord Jesus can help you and is willing to help you. No, it, no, no matter what you are doing, it, it, if you will have challenges with certain habits, sinful habits, I hear the Lord says that I, I am going to help you. Just, just trust in me. Trust in me. I hear the Lord say, just come closer to me. Don't run away from me. Come closer. I will take it away. I will take it away. Focus more on me. And you will see yourself changing. You will see yourself changing. I see the Lord stripping us from condemnation. Some of us are, we are, will feel condemned. That we are not worthy. But the Lord says... I love you still. And I will fix you. 
the Lord says, I will fix you. Just gaze upon me. Will you follow me? Will you follow me? If you follow me, I will change you. I will fix you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you thanks. Come on, can we just thank the Lord this morning? I just sense healing. The Lord is healing you. I'm sorry I'm taking additional time, but I just sense that there's a work of healing going on in the spirit for some of you. God is changing. Those old natures that, are, that seems to torment you, you are going to see their hand. You are going to see their hand. Now God is going to use those circumstances to work out your total healing. You are, you, are now, you are not just going to be healed. You will be a source of comfort to many. I see the Lord making that place a place of authority in the spirit for you. That same place that you have been hurt, you have been wounded, you have been defeated again and again by certain natures, by certain habits. I see the Lord restoring you, strengthening you, and granting you both strength in the spirit, authority in the spirit to deliver many, many, many. To bring succor to many to bring comfort to many. Thank you. Can we just appreciate the Lord this morning?